doesn't require us to make like a monstrous shift in thinking. Mm. It, like a tiny little adjustment mm. in our thinking. Small oh, This processes. is going to be a t-shirt for my great, 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 great grandchild. Yes. If I do this well. Yes. talk sustainability, the first thing that comes to mind are all those whales washing up on the beach with stomachs full of plastic. We think that because we chose not to have a straw with our Coca-Cola this morning, that that's going to be enough to save the ocean. We think that because we're doing meat-free Mondays, because all our friends are doing it, that that's going to be sufficient in reducing our meat consumption. The reality is I think the interior design industry could make a significant difference to the environment by choosing better, choosing wiser, and taking a lot more things into consideration. So today, I'm gonna to help you make some wise decisions and help you wisen up on a few facts that you might not have been aware of in terms of choosing more sustainably. And then we're also gonna be catching up with Andre Kleinans, who's really, really well-read and well-versed on the subject. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So when we talk sustainability, the first thing we think is that I'm going to go completely natural. You know, I'm not going to do any of this plastic. That's probably the worst thing you can do. The reality is by using natural fibers, we don't realize how many processes that natural fiber has to go through to get to that perfect shade of white that you need. It goes through a million washes, like literally. It goes through a million bleaching processes. It goes through all sorts of processes to land up on your table, crisp white. Whereas if we looked at a synthetic fiber that's recyclable and really recycle it, I think that would be the much cleaner option. The biggest thing is if you're a purist and you want this organic look, you want something that has the look of a linen and has the look of a cotton without being a cotton then or you're looking for something that's serviceable because serviceability is essential in terms of sustainability. We don't realize the chemicals involved in terms of cleaning and maintenance of a product afterwards, especially in natural fiber. So I've earmarked a few collections. First and foremost has to be the two fiber guard collections that we've just brought to the market. Uses very little resources in terms of cleaning, uses very little chemicals in terms of cleaning. First one up is casual. Casual has the look of a linen without being a linen and with all the fiber guard technology so completely stain free and serviceable with basic water and if need be a little bit of household soap. Available in a myriad of colors and some very natural neutrals as well and definitely on our radar as a future bestseller. Then color wash is also really really useful and also really good to replace your cotton option with a more sustainable option. So the look of a stone washed linen without the carbon footprint and without the eco issues surrounding 100% cotton. A very muted palette makes it a very desirable collection. Then pioneering also, because I think all three of these books are pioneering, has to be Lisbon from Designers Guild. So Lisbon really is pioneering in that they're using recycled yarn from the fashion industry and reusing it as upholstery fabrics. So a very typical Designers Guild color palette with pops of bright fuchsias, pops of bright sky blues, some jadey greens. I think this is a very useful little collection and really has that soft Chanel coat sort of feel about it. You've got a very, very useful black and white uh, houndstooth. You've got some really interesting little multicolor weaves and these really are you know, like you can upholster big pieces of furniture for these and they're really reasonably priced for an international product. Definitely worth keeping in your library, especially if you're going to be trying to green your design process a bit, as we should. Then on home fabric side, we have something called Ocheotex. Ocheotex is basically a test that makes sure that the product that is brought to the market is free of harmful substances because that's also something that we don't realize sometimes in dyeing techniques and all these sort of things. So like stuff like formaldehyde are not included in terms of getting the product to you. Well, that's enough about product for now. I think the real thing is the processes and stuff involved in it as well. So we're gonna skip across to Andre Kleinans, who's really like a fountain of information on sustainable resources and design. 
So Andre, this episode is really about sustainability and design and you know I think we are becoming increasingly aware of what is going on in our surroundings and you know how can we be more sustainable and what can we do. Um, do you think design has played an integral role in this? Um, it's a very good question and mm -hmm. I think uh, integral is probably a bit of an understatement. Mm. Uh, design is designed by the very nature of what it is, is uh, art. Mm -hmm. or the pursuit of solving problems yeah and interior designers have we, we solve everyday problems for everyday people yes like make spaces where they can be happy and live and do the things that require doing and mm -hmm. on the silly end of it you know it's like is there enough light and on the more serious end is they seat, seat comfortable yeah so not only is it our uh, privilege but also uh, certain obligation, our responsibility to promote the ideas and the concept of a more sustainable approach to design. As designers, you know, we are the vehicle that bring all those things closer to the end consumer. Our clients are busy enough with their lives and their children and their jobs and their homes and their pets and, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and if we don't do this, then it just well, won't get done. It's been proposed that the first generation of people who will on average live past 100 has already been born. It's if that's crazy, not the most yeah. terrifying thought in the whole, the whole world, now we've got the situation, we've created the situation where we're going to live longer, mm -hmm. and the people that are going to live longer, longer, longer than us mm -hmm. have been born, and we're all here, mm -hmm. and there's more of us. And we're multiplying um, at a rapid rate. Well, and then there's that. And then I'm wondering that with all this living long, near, forever, mm -hmm. where are we going to do it? Because currently, at the rate which we are plundering our natural resources and mm. unsustainable habits and I, I, there seems to be a, a, a small gap in, in, the, in, in the logic. Yeah. Yes, we want to live forever and no, it doesn't look like it's going to be here. <laughs> and I, I, I know science fiction has kind of like sort of pacified us with the idea that someday if we stand in the right cornfield at the right time, <laughs> yes. then a spaceship is going to arrive and like whisk us all up and take us to another planet yeah. where we can continue to pillage and destroy, you know, at a different rate. Um, just hope I could fit on that spacecraft yeah. that comes. There's space for little me. We work in the future. Yeah. So my choice today will have an effect not only five minutes from now. Do I look good in these jeans? Yeah. You know, the sofa, the house, the building has a lifespan of between five and 50 years, depending on the nature of what it is. So yes. every decision lives long. And the repercussions of that decision lives even longer. Yeah. So if, if, if we don't do this, if we don't deliberately redirect, mm. then not only are we standing by, but we're helping destruction exponentially. Yes. So in terms of your everyday design style, you know, with this big drive that you've put behind you, yourself and your team, what, what greening options have you started selecting? What, are you, what have you done? So, as designers, we are in the privileged position where people come to us for advice, comfort, often yes. on comfort and for yes. comfort. And when they employ us to do work for them, most often they want us to make the problem go away. Mm. So, the big picture problem is what people see, or the big, mm. and we call it a brief or a project. Yeah. They leave the bulk of the decisions to us. So we make recommendations, we make suggestions, we, we, we drive this whole thing. Mm. Client first responses to the visual aspects of it, mm. and then the rest of it is really our silent and quiet and secret responsibility. We must make sure it's comfortable, durable, will last a long time. Mm. And then of course, you know, we have the options of making choices which impact directly on the environment. Do we choose a product from a house or a manufacturer that manufactures responsibly and does a, yes. don't, don't like spill the excess into rivers and the oceans and the seas? Yeah. Or do we just buy the cheapest stuff from the cheapest place that is like burning the planet down as we speak that to we make can it for one in three years. Yes. Oh, I'll replace them in three like years. This whole disposability, mm. consumerist obsession. Mm. Um, me insane. Yeah. So if after the fact you explain to people what drove your choices and your decisions and how you brought the whole thing together and you've explained to them that they are now one of the people out front who has now made, literally made a contribution, mm. 
however small, you know, then they actually really like the idea. But and, and you know, this is not just pie in the sky. Mm. By making good choice, it also means putting something with like less maintenance. Yes. So less maintenance means less effort, and less effort means less chemicals, and blah, blah, blah. you know, yes. the whole thing just continues on and on and on forever. It seems like such a small choice. Yeah. A decision that I make in five minutes: shall we use this fabric for the sofa, or shall I use that fabric for the sofa? Yeah. If I choose well. This choice, like I said before, will last like 10 to 15 years yes, if it's well made. Exactly. Yeah. And it, people actually like the idea of inclusion. It's, it's a wonderful thing yeah. because then they tell their friends. Yes. And then, you know, like one, if only one, on person tell one person tells one person tells one person, yeah. we can already change the world. I think it's also in the power of tiny gains. You know, doing little things all, all the, the time, time adds up to a big thing if everybody does it. When you're selecting fabric specifically now, because you know we're all about fabric because we're passionate about fabric <laughs> um, what are you looking for specifically in, in line with my philosophy of using less for longer mm -hmm. we obviously look for ways to tread lighter yes like make a smaller footprint and uh, you know we all started off with the idea of the carbon footprint but it extends way beyond that it's yeah. just like making less permanent impact sustainability is very interesting even synthetic fabrics mm -hmm. come from a finite resource yeah we make polyester strangely enough not out of thin air no we make yeah. it from coal and other things that come things. from the earth and at some point in time it's going to run out mm. so sustainability i.e growing sustainable fibers such as um, bamboo mm. and hemp mm. which needs very little pesticides but it's very takes very little out of the environment, are reasonably fast growing. Mm. Um, there are certain downsides, which I think technology is required. They're super absorbent, so they mm. use water to wash them. But there must be solutions for that somewhere. Mm. You take that and you combine back to Andre's boring idea, less for longer. Mm. We take that whole philosophy and we bring it back to this. Then we try and make the choices which support that. Yeah, it's like a cradle to cradle approach. Completely. Yeah. So, you know, this, the fashion industry plays quite a big part in the whole disposable consumer culture. Yes. Especially, and I, you know, it has a place. Yes. One. Yeah. But certainly, and this, uh, the fashion industry creates like enormous amounts of waste. Yeah. So the options are the following, and this is like, it's like literally horrifying. Yeah. They either burn it. Yes. Literally, put it on, put it on pallets and burn it and put all that stuff back in there. Not only the carbon, but the pollution. They have no other choice. This is how the whole industry is get up to date. Or we find ways to recycle it or mm. repurpose it. And this is what this makes it so amazing. It's now mm. making something out of something which would have gone not only to waste, but would have added to the destruction. So it's like a yes. double whammy. You get like a double benefit. Yeah. You get something which is repurposed, recycled, reusable. We put mm. it into Andre's matrix of longer, better. Exactly. Da -da -da, and we're saving like smog and burning. Exactly. And Fashion industry is a big culprit. I agree 100% with you. And I think this is a really nice initiative by one of the biggest houses in the country, in the world rather, to go and start with collections that's actually geared towards that. And I think it shows you that we're dealing with forward thinking people. Absolutely. Do you think longevity of product and longevity of design is an important part? You know, in terms of shapes, sofa styles, all those sort of things, you know, that's... I'm not sure if I've mentioned this, yeah. but, you know, in the world of Andre, mm -hmm. like, longer lasting <laughs> is much <laughs> better than dispo disposable. Um, sorry, just in case I haven't mentioned that. <laughs> so the longer we use something, mm -hmm. the less frequently we have to replace it. So the more durable something is, the less frequently we have to replace it. Sorry, that stands for repeating. Yeah. So the longer we use something, mm. the less we have to replace it. Yeah. The less resources are used over time and on a planet of people that are going to live longer and there's more of us, mm. it feels like sensible mathematics. Make it better and make it last longer. Yes. And make it easier to maintain. Yeah. Because that is like green for dummies. Yeah. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to get that one. Yeah. With limited natural resources and things fast becoming depleted and natural resources becoming more and more expensive by the day, you know, there's only so much fresh water on the planet. Do you think the future is synthetic? Do you think that it, we should do this cradle to cradle approach or what are your thoughts on it? I, I, I think that with most other things, the solution lies in a sensible balance. Mm. And you know, balance is not always an easy thing to find, but it shouldn't stop us from actually trying that. Even synthetics mm. come from natural resources. Mm. The raw materials that make up polyester come from the earth. Mm. Um, so on the one side is we mine from a finite source, mm. we remove 
until at some point in time there'll be nothing left. Mm -hmm. And on, on the other hand, there are natural plant fiber options that are sustainable. And these are sustainable, which means mm. that they can be made on and on. There's a more potentially infinite source of fabrication. Mm. The interesting thing about like naturally, fascinatingly enough, the processes to make, turn the bamboo into fabric or the hemp into fabric requires a lot of manual processes mm. and manual, like much friendlier to the environment processes mm. than industrial. So it's like yes. very interesting like, side effect. And then there's also the idea of recycling the obvious. Mm. Of all the polyester that's made mm. from limited resources that mm. we take out of the earth, mm. 30%, let me repeat that, 30% mm. is for PET water bottles. It's crazy. So 30% of our capacity from a finite source, mm. what we do is we drink, and dust in the sea, it. and there we go. We make a small little continent in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's crazy. Where nobody sees it and destroy, out of sight, out of destroy, mind. destroy, destroy, destroy. Option one. Mm. Option two is we don't do that. We mm. take the water bottles and we put that 30% back into. So we can already, my mathematics is horrible, maybe potentially have 33.5% more mm. in the resources part of polyester alone. Yeah. And, we can, and the, they are forward thinking companies that make the most amazing fabric. They just re polyester it. I mean, yeah. I don't know what a better word for yeah, that. Like but cradle. they just make it again. Mm. And so, you know, this theoretically means if we are careful, this plastic water bottle can technically live forever. Yes. We can recycle it. Over and Forever. over and over I mean, how's again. that for an idea? Instead of just tossing it in the ocean. Yeah. No, so, that's very true. I mean, the magic and the miracle of that, it, just, it doesn't require us to make like a monstrous shift in thinking. Mm. It, like a tiny little adjustment mm. in our thinking. Small oh, This processes. is going to be a t-shirt for my great, 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 great grandchild. Yes. If I do this well. Yes. No, and that's kind a great way to think about it. Yeah. Energy consumption is a major contributor to um, greenhouse gas emissions and all these sort of things. Um, how do you think the textile industry could assist in this? How could we help this? The whole problem with global warming from greenhouse gases, and I do need just to say at this point in time that I'm not a specialist in anything. I'm mm. just like a huge enthusiast yes. on the subject of this. No, so no, you know. A so, wealth of information. So, so greenhouse gases come from several sources and you know, one is transport and the other one is like industry and mm. there's a big slice in agriculture mm. and uh, like, uh, it might be 15 to 20 percent of yes. American st studies Yeah. and the bulk of these come from factory farming. Yeah. It's fast growing genetically modified crops that of course goes into the animals on the factory farming which of course they then sell unto us to eat yeah so the greenhouse gases generated by the livestock themselves contributes massively yes that's so, the biggest culprit so, so small lifestyle changes like less again can we go back to less yes like use less mm. in order for us to have air to breathe mm. We might have to choose our meat more carefully. It sounds so silly. Yeah. It sounds daft. But when you go to the Wimper to order your breakfast, ask them if it's free range organic eggs. Mm. If enough people ask, if enough designers ask enough manufacturers and enough fabric suppliers for these things, mm. then at some point in time, the impetus will be there to supply. Do you think we can turn this boat around? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, we need one answer. <laughs> so, as designers, like I've mentioned before, it is our privilege mm. to educate as we go mm. the possible solutions that are painless to implement. And there's many painless solutions. Yeah. As consumers, I think now, if we want to turn this boat around, mm. it has become time to rethink every little decision we make arbitrarily every mm. day. I'm not a big believer of waiting for a select few to make giant leaps and sa mm -hmm. save the world. We cannot be waiting for others to do it for us. We cannot mm -hmm. wait for mm -hmm. other people to save it for us. I think there's unlimited and breathtaking power in the hands of absolutely every consumer for making small changes all the time, making yeah. more conscious choices. We want to live longer, we want our children to live longer, we want everyone to have a happier life. Mm. 
and we need to provide a place where this is possible. And if we're not really prepared to do that, then it probably is time to go to a cornfield somewhere <laughs> with your deck chair and your knitting and wait for the spaceship to come and fetch you to a better place. In closing, where can our viewers read more about, about this? Where have you... Because you're quite, you're quite under well the, researched under, on this. And under the radar, yeah. AKDG, Andre Cannon's Design Group, has a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. follow us on there if you'd like. I'd also like to point out a couple of interesting resources mm -hmm. for more reading on sustainable green design. Most of the design councils across the world on their website have links to the practice and stuff courses and sustainability mm -hmm. um, that they offer at their colleges. One is for them from the designinstitute.com and the other one is www.sbid.org. Google is our friend mm. and if you just do a little bit of research you can find real easy and simple ways of actually having real impact. Yes. To make a place for us all to live happily Love. longer. So I hope we're all going to make better decisions now. Anyway, I hope that was an informative episode to help and equip you with the tools that you need in terms of making better decisions for the environment. The reality is, unless we start making realistic, sustainable decisions today, we're not going to have much of a future. In our next episode, we're going to be having a fat conversation with Carl Rue about working into Africa and the unique challenges surrounding it. Please also remember to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss a beat. And then also if you scroll down, you'll see HF Inner Circle. HF Inner Circle is basically a group of inspired individuals that are passionate about fabrics. And it's important for you, if you're as passionate as we are about fabrics, that you also join the HF Inner Circle to have access to exclusive content first. Anyway, that's it from me. Bye. Let's go, let's go. Okay. And then please tell us more about yourself. <laughs> For real some shady person. <laughs> okay. okay. Hi, my name is Andre Clenans.